What is up, fellow humans of the cardboard? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, I've got another deck profile following Lightning Overdrive's release. And uh, today we're looking at Plunder Patrols. This is has been a while. One of my one of my more favorite decks, um, especially the new ones. Um, the I don't know, like this. The, we get a lot of new decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, but this is one that definitely stood out to me as feeling very unique in the play style and the mechanics that it makes use of. And um, I don't know, the artwork's cool. Uh, you just have a lot of really cool interactive ways that this deck likes to play. So. Um, very huge. Uh, Black Eyes is a huge, huge card for the deck. The deck is way better than the four. The only thing we are waiting for now is a good wind and earth target, uh, or wind and earth ship, pretty much, so that way you don't just lose those matchups versus decks based in those attributes. But uh, yeah, I guess before we get into the list real quick, I know it doesn't have anything to do with Plunder Patrols, but this mat is my favorite mat to use right now. You have Ecclesia staring down um, Golgonda on this side and then her backed up by the Stigmata Dragon on the other side. It's a double-sided playmat. It's my favorite playmat to use. If you want to pick up your own, uh, I'll leave a link in the description and a 10% code. That way you save a little bit of money. I get a little bit of money. Charles gets a little bit of money. My guy from Team COG who made this mat and... Uh, yeah, so I'll leave that down below if you are interested. But without further ado, let's just jump into our plunder, plundery goodness, okay? Starting off with the monsters here, we've got three copies of Whitebeard, the Plunder Patrol Helm, three copies of Redbeard, the Plunder Patrol Matey, three copies of Black Eyes, the Plunder Patrol Sea Guide, three copies of Golden Hair, <laughs> the newest Plunder Patrol, and finishing up with two copies of Bluebeard, the Plunder Patrol Shipwright. Um... I've seen a lot of people just maxing out on all these. I get it. You do want to see names, but I feel like Bluebeard's the least impactful one as an extender um, overall, and I'm totally cool with hitting him at, at two. If you want to play him at three, feel free. I have no gripes with that. We're already adding three more names with Black Eyes, and Black Eyes is really good at getting you plunders back to hand. So opening names is already better than it was before, and I just think Black Eyes just outclasses Bluebeard overall. So you can play them side by side at three and three, but I think for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna play three, 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 and two for now, unless I really fe play more and I feel like, oh, I'm not seeing enough, and the one copy is gonna make all that much difference. But Black Eyes is so huge. If you don't know what he does, essentially he can target a plunder monster in grave, except for himself. Uh, then he summons himself and then adds the card you targeted back to your hand. Um, but it does lock you into plunder patrols for the rest of the turn. Um, special summon wise and if he's sent from hand or monster zone to grave you can target a plunder monster in your spell and trap zone and summon it to the field in defense position um the second effect doesn't really come up that often but the first effect is so good it doesn't require you to have anything on field you just need any plunder monster in grave and this card can extend itself onto the field and get you a resource back that's so huge because it almost guarantees you via a lot of pl different play lines that you end your turn with a plunder card in hand this is exactly what the deck needed because you ended up with play lines you're like oh i can go into two ships or i can set myself up for two different ships really powerful oh no i forgot that i don't have a plunder discard in hand or you're relying on specific draws off of like Bluebeard or something to try and hit exactly a plunder monster um off the top and if you don't then you have no disruption whatsoever so very very important card extremely extremely good after that though finishing up the monsters it's literally just hand traps triple ash of course double ghost spell double skull meister for the monster hand traps i'm also playing in perm but just for my ocd i kept it with the rest of the traps so we'll get there when we get there but this is my lineup um very simple. I think uh, like Graveyard Disruption's at a premium right now. It feels really, really strong in like almost every single matchup. So Bell, Meister, Ash, all good, all very strong. Um, I also really like Bell. I see I don't I see Meister now like more than Bell, and I get it. I think they're both good, but Bell stops Tri Brigade Revolt as well as Nadir Servant, and I think those two interactions specifically just um, get me rowdy. <laughs> also, Drytron's Engrave Tribute for Cost. Um, so they treat for cost and then you can just bell them. So they like lose another card or at least have it sent to grave. Um, and they don't even get the reborn. So it's actually pretty impactful there depending on, um, when you're hitting them. All right. But that is it for the monsters moving into the spells. Obviously we got to play three of one of the best plunder cards, uh, ship, uh, shipyard. This card's insane. Discard any card to search any plunder card. Um, and then it can like set itself back to the field by, um, uh, 
bouncing a plunder card that's in your spell and trap zone back to hand and it gives you power buffs this card's insane this card does so much for the deck if this card didn't exist the deck would be so much worse because just you wouldn't have consistency terraforming because we want to see that at all costs one copy of ship shape ship shipping you do want one of this because there are very rare situations where you want to search it out for the fusion summon but also other than like white beard it's the best discard in the deck uh, because it immediately allows you to equip Emblem straight from the deck to one of your Plunder Monsters. And Emblem will allow you to like tag into one of your um, one of your extra deck ships um, on your turn. You could be more offensive with it, more fast with it. So that's why I'm playing two of this. Um, not 100% mandatory. It's always... Emblem's just better to get off of this. But drawing, it's not that bad either. Because you just equip it and do it. But this, you use a discard fodder and then get this for free. So... It's a little more resource efficient, but uh, all really good cards nonetheless. Um, if you pot of desires these away, it's really not that big of a deal unless you're in like an exact situation where it's either that play or lose. Uh, but that doesn't really happen <laughs> all that often, you know. Uh, then for the rest of the spells, generic stuff here. We've got triple pot of desires, one monster reborn, one twist twist, ugh, twin twisters, and one called by the grave. Um, this this ratio probably looks like really strange to people. Um, not not necessarily. It's mainly just twin twisters, I guess. Desires is insane in this deck. Black eyes is a three of. Uh, white beards a three of. Red beards a three of. Other than that, there's like nothing in the deck you really care about banishing all your copies of. Even Redbeard, you probably don't care that much. It's mainly just Whitebeard and Black Eyes, to be honest. Um, so Desires is a phenomenal, just plus one. Uh, Monster Reborn, awesome extender. Again, this is like, um, so many of your cards, like, can be disrupted by one or two hand traps, and then this just getting back a Whitebeard, getting back a Redbeard and passing, just gets you a raw tag into a ship for a disruption, uh, which is really good. And like, sometimes you have a situation where like, you're able to just make um blackbeard um and so just opening monster reborn with that allows you to just like reborn a white beard or a red beard and then you just send blackbeard plus another one so you have two ship tag-ins on your opponent's turn so as long as you have any one discard you should be able to get the job done um then you have twin twisters uh this was literally the last slot in the deck you could play upstart goblin but i don't want to lose to droll because droll's actually pretty popular in the format not just in side decks but in main decks right now so twin is just a cool it's an it's like a mystic mine out if you're playing against back row this deck loves to discard you have multiple good discards in the deck so twins a little more impactful you could play cosmic or something like that if you want to or even harpy's feather duster to be honest i did i just have this because uh whatever it could be anything i just like having that main deck out to like mystic mine uh and then called um called's also really good uh, i think this is a mandatory card in this deck i've seen some lists not play this and i don't understand it the worst card for this deck to play against is ash blossom and joy spring um all of your ships when they disrupt your opponent they do like a disruption by discarding a card but all in the same effect it adds another like plunder card to hand and so uh they're all ashable and it doesn't just stop the ad from hand. It stops the entire effect. So you, they, can, they can just like negate a negate or a disruption just by using Ash. And so called, I think, is like super mandatory for that. If it was at three, I'd play it at three. I'm kidding you not. I'd drop the, the twin twisters. I'd play 41 if I had to. I don't care. I would play three. But this deck really hates Ash Blossom that much. And then finishing up, that is all the spells. Finishing up with the traps here, we have three Plunder Patrol Booty and obviously the Impermanence. This is... The rest of the main deck. Uh, Booty, I think, is still a three of. Some people say, like, oh, but John, the field spell searches it. You know, it's searchable. You don't need to, like, you don't need to go in on this as a three of. I get that. But when you play stuff like Virtual World, when you play those matchups, your deck isn't particularly amazing. Or your opponent knows how to play against this deck and doesn't give you great stuff in Grave or great attributes in Grave for you to make the best of. Something like Salamangri. Sure, you can make Bran, but Bran's only spelling trap removal. If you want to be more offensive or like more monster uh, disruptive, you need something like Moerk, particularly in that matchup, is really important. And they may not give you a, a, a dark, so you need to have something like Booty to consistently allow that. Not only that, but it reborns a Plunder Patrol every turn. Uh, so this card's insane in the grind. If they can't get this off the field, you're just going to run away with advantage. And then in Perm, so we have 10 hand traps in the main. That feels like a pretty good number to me. I'd consider even looking at almost 12 hand traps, but... You know, right now, 10 feels pretty good with the lineup I have at the moment. So that's it for the main 40 cards. Uh, like I said, like this is a deck where you want to always end with a plunder in hand. So I'm trying to keep it consistent and concise at 40. 
Let's move to the extra deck. For the plunder stuff, super pretty standard here, right? Blackbeard at three, of course, and then the other ships we play all at two. Two Lys, two Moark, and two Bran. Uh, in my experience, I've never needed a third copy of any of these, although I think Moark's definitely the one that I would lean towards most at having a third copy of, but whatever. The other slots in the deck are actually pretty useful to have. Um, we'll get to those in a sec, but yep, they're just great. Um, this guy's the most important one. You're making him like with like every turn almost it feels like so the three of him is is definitely the most um the most reasonable out of all of them and then you've got back row banishing monster banishes and monster negates all phenomenal in their own way we just need a uh, an earth and a wind that's it we just need a good earth and a good wind that's all we need all right, then for the extra deck stuff, for the one Link monster we play other than um, Blackbeard is Almirage. This card specifically makes, um, what's her face? Uh, golden Hair, like a one card play into Blackbeard, or um, it also makes her um, just like a, an actual decent normal summon, right? Like you don't even really want to be normal summoning um, like white beard or red beard or blue beard or like or rape or black wing so it's like or black eyes it's the it's literally the only decent normal summon so um you want this just to clear it off the field so you can use it to discard right discard white beard get a free an extra special summon from deck discard ship shape ship shipping extend with with emblem right you have multiple good cards that way uh, so almirage just helps unlock that for synchros, these are really, really cool. I love these two. We have White Aura Whale and Adamancipator Risen Dragite. These cards are so, so cool in, in the deck. Um, they, co they cover very, very specific situations, but they're so good at what they do. First off, White Aura Whale. When he is summoned, he triggers to destroy all of your opponent's attack position monsters. It's non-targeting, but it is a board wipe, and that's actually pretty strong. The coolest thing there is if your opponent has a, bunch of bo a board with a bunch of negates, you can chain lock this hella easily oh my god man if you make him with black eyes you can chain block him white beard you can chain block him um red beard you can chain block him potentially i think red beard um potentially red beard depends what else is on your board um and blue beard right so like you have so many ways to chain block him um and that's the biggest thing right if they have like savages and all that stuff you just bypass negations and wipe the board uh, which is so, so good. Uh, and also, if he's destroyed by card effect or battle, just destroyed, uh, he will he can banish a monster, water monster from grave and immediately reborn himself. And then he's just continually coming back. So he's really annoying for your opponent to out. Very cool card. And then Dragite. Specifically why I like Dragite here is in like back row-ish matchups, Dragite's really cool. Or even just specific situations. Dragite's cool because... If you can just make him very quickly, like in one like one quick um, synchro summon, your opponent won't have a chance, like may not have a great chance to activate a back row, and then you immediately have this on the field, which is a spell and trap negate, um, which is really cool. Um, like you do play like Bahamut and Toad, but I think this covers the specific situation where like, oh, if I make Bahamut, I'm giving my opponent a chance to like ruin my play, right? Torrential, just clear the Bahamut. Imperm, whatever. If they didn't imperm you before, you can go straight into Dragite, and now the Imperm's dead. Like, you're just going to negate it, and then you have continual spell and trap negate every single turn. Um, and so I like him for that specific situation, just being able to play into stuff a little bit cleaner and just, like, um, you know, mitigate back row stuff. Really cool. And then, obviously, Bahamut and Toad. Super necessary. Um, like, while his Dragite has that specific scenario where playing into stuff it's better... Um, this, these guys are just better. Like Toad's just overall better. It's an Omni negate instead of just a, a spell and trap negate. You could potentially steal the card you're negating and it's going to get you recursion when it, when you, when you, after you negate something, that is so crazy. Um, and you get to keep the Bahamut on field too, even if you do that with a 2,600 body. So crazy. It's just too good, right? Like it, it really is. It's just too good. Um, so yeah, got to play those in my opinion. And then the very last card in the extra deck is one copy of Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. This is a weird one. And this is this is the final slot in the extra deck. I kind of went back and forth in a couple options. You could obviously look at Abyss Dweller, stuff like Boral Sword or Access Code if you want to add a little bit of more OTK potential generically, if you can just spam the board. But I feel like if you're spamming the board that much, it means you're probably making use of Black Eyes and he's locking you out of uh, locking you into Plunder Patrols anyway. Um, 
And the deck's actually pretty proficient at, at OTKing by itself anyway. I don't think Axis Code's that important. It is big removal, but I think the deck can still can still maintain anyway. But the reason I like this guy is, is like, other than Dragite, um, this guy is another, or um, White Aura Whale, this is another really cool option going second. Depending on the kind of, like, back row your opponent plays, as long as they don't have, like, a straight-up negation, this guy's going to beat him like a back row deck. Like, summon him, clear the whole board immediately. Um, and as long as they don't have negation, it, it's going to work. And you're going you're gonna to really, really, uh, you know, cement everything back to, um, you know, a simplified board state and hopefully be able to take over. The cool thing there is after you detach a material, if you had access to black eyes after you do this, you'd be like, oh, but how do you play after that? You don't want to just end Exitonite and lose. Well, then you just go black eyes summon or like add something back to summon. And then you could take these two into Blackbeard. And now you have a Blackbeard disruption keeping you in your engine. And if you had something like Whitebeard to discard, then you're looking kind of clean. Obviously, that's a good, that's a like an ideal scenario, but easily could end up happening. And we play, you know, three copies of Black Eyes and uh, four copies of the Field Spell. So pretty consistently with like, you know, desires and stuff, we're going to be able to see this. So I really like where the deck's at right now. It feels really solid. I think the engine's so strong. I think if you were to just look at an archetype rawly without even knowing contextually what it does and you just read like white beard the field spell booty and black eyes you'd be like wow that is an engine right there this deck kind of crazy and it is the engine's actually pretty crazy um but it's restrictions it's natural restrictions which i like because it keeps the deck like realistic and not broken um they do need to make a wind and an earth. So hopefully we get those sooner than later. Please don't forget about us, Konami. Please don't forget to give us those in the next year, I would hope. I would pray. Um, that would just be so good. But uh, that's going to end it off for me here today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on more deck profiles. I have more stuff coming from Lightning Overdrive. This is just the beginning. Um, and yeah. Let me know in the comment section also what you would change about the list. I know this is just me building by myself, my personal choices. Let me know what you would change about the list. But I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe again if you haven't. I'll see you again. Bye.